Hey guys, welcome to Bowhunting Soul. Today we are in the kitchen. Uh, told you we're gonna do a bunch of uh, you know cooking and then that kind of you know uh, cooking and processing kind of videos. And today we're actually gonna be canning. Now you're gonna say canning. People don't really can a whole lot, especially not not meat. Well, we're gonna be canning some ve uh, venison today. Now I normally can a lot of. Um, <clears throat> uh, uh, beans, I do like uh, bread and butter pickles, other pickles, dilly beans, uh, um, um, beets, peaches, that kind of stuff. But, um, can, and a lot of people do, and sometimes they'll even do salsa. But a lot of people, for some reason, don't can meat anymore. So you're probably asking two questions. One, why are we canning meat? And two, is it hard to do? Well, let's answer the first one. Uh, the first one, yeah, well, we're canning meat because basically what we're going to do is we're going to preserve food. I mean, canning is preserving food in jars. So we are going to preserve uh, some, some cut up venison that I have in here. And you can use this with uh, you know, any kind of meat. You can do this any kind of meat. You can do it with pork. You can do it with uh, beef. You can do it with venison. And it allows you to store pre-cooked food, not refrigerated you can put it in a cool dry place in your pantry a bug out shelter i don't care whatever it doesn't matter that's up to you but um you know the, the simplicity of you know coming home pulling this thing off the shelf opening it up putting it in a saucepan heating it up and then pouring it over i don't know noodles rice mashed potatoes or whatever it's it's really really um convenient and again it doesn't take up uh, freezer space you got a lot of shelf space so and what basically what this ends up doing is it ends up turning this into um, like pot roast in a jar. And it's really, really just, and it's super simple to make. Now, a um, couple disclaimers. First of all, this is my second take at this video. Um, I actually shot most of this video and actually canned a lot of this stuff a few weeks ago, uh, but I lost the first part of this video. So instead of trying to recreate everything in the same shirt, same time, all that kind of stuff, uh, the second part, the second last half, half of this video, you're actually going to see when I'm pulling this stuff out of this, this canner. Uh, I'm wearing completely something different. That was a few weeks ago. I figured I'd try not to pull something over on you guys and, uh, and just kind of recreate this. So we're actually, I'm going to show you how to can one of these. I actually ended up doing like seven jars. Um, and then you'll see the seven jars or whatever come out at the end of this video. Uh, the second part of this is canning, uh, it kind of answers the, the second question, is canning difficult? Canning is not super difficult, but you need to pay attention. Um, I would urge you, you know, watching this one, and I would urge you to go watch other channels on, on canning, go buy books. Um, a really great one is this one by Ball. This has a lot of recipes in it, and it's kind of like a canning 101. <clears throat> Now, I'm going to do the disclaimer, another disclaimer, uh, all this, you know, I'm an affiliate with Amazon and I have to disclose that, you know, if you buy any of this stuff, if you, if you click through any of these links, I'm going to provide links to all this stuff, uh, both, you know, the book and the jars and the canner and all that kind of stuff. Uh, if you go through there, then um, I do get a commission, itty bitty one, but, um, and I do appreciate it if you click through there, if you're going to go buy some of this stuff and look at it, I'd really like you to go through mine, you know, I'm not going to make any bones about that. So. Um, anyway, so canning, yes, canning is, is simple, but it is also something you need to pay very, very close attention to, and you need to follow recipes, and you can't cut corners because of botulism, okay? Botulism is serious, serious stuff. It, it's, it's a bacteria, and it grows in a enclosed, anaerobic, meaning no oxygen, uh, damp environment, okay? What's going to live in here? Uh, botulism, I mean, it's not like your simple tummy ache or, or salmonella or anything like that. It puts that to shame. Botulism, botulism can kill you. It comes from, I'm going to mess this up here, uh, Clostridium botulinium, something like that. Anyway, that's the bacteria. It produces a spore. The spore produces a toxin. It's a neurotoxin. Okay, it can kill you. People to this day, even in the United States with medical treatment that we have, up to five or 10% of people, even when they're treated, still die from this, okay? So how horrible would you feel if you cut corners and you give this to your kid and something terrible happens? So go and do uh, more research on how to can. Um, I'm just gonna, and stick to the recipes and stick to the canning times. So um, that being said, uh, <clears throat> I'm kind of gonna, gonna, gonna show you the basics and I'm gonna show you one thing over here, by the way, we're gonna do pressure canning. Now there's two types of canning. Uh, water bath canning, where this entire jar is submerged in water and it's, bo and it's processed. Processing means cooking in the canning world, okay, for uh, so, you know, X amount, of, X amount of minutes, X amount of time. And then what happens, uh, well, I'll show you that. This basically seals. I'll show you how that happens. 
but two but two twelve is what water boils at at at, uh, um, at sea level. Well, some bacteria like botulism, you can't kill it at two twelve. You need to you need to raise the you need to raise the temperature higher. So how do we do that? Well, that's when a pressure canner comes in. This is a pressure canner. I've already got the the water kind of um, heating up in there. And with a pressure canner, um, there's only about this much water in there, so the jars kind of sit like this, and it's basically to kind of help distribute the heat inside. And uh, the pressure rises with the use of these little guys here. Five pounds, an extra one's another five pounds, an extra one's another five pounds. That's pounds of pressure. So total with these three is 15 pounds of pressure um, uh, PSI inside, which raises the temperature. So when you have like, you know, the whole 15 pound deal on there, it's like uh, 255 degrees. So that does kill, you know, all kinds of stuff. So we're going to be processing this meat. I'm actually going to actually show you, I'm going to make, I'm going to make this for another video. Uh, you'll see this exact meat probably in, uh, in a grinding video, like a burger or sausage or something like that. But I am going to show you how to stuff one of these, these cans. And for the seasoning of the meat, I'm just basically, <clears throat> um, all I really did was salt and pepper um, when I actually did it. And uh, I, I sliced up some onion and some garlic, some minced garlic. Now you can put whatever you want in there. I would urge you to back off on the salt because uh, when you actually go to open this, you don't know what you're going to mix this with. What, this, what I did um, from this very batch you're going to see actually is uh, I just had it the other night. You open it up, put it in a saucepan, I heated it up, and I put just a little bit of that uh, gravy mix, pre-mixed gravy mix in there. And that has salt in, in it too. So the salt is not necessary in this in this recipe to cure it or, or to keep it safe. So if you're salt sensitive, you don't want to get too much salt in there, back it off a bit. You can put whatever you want in there. And we're also going to do what's called a dry pack, and I'll show you that. There's going to be no liquid in here. We're just going to put the cubes of meat, about three quarter inch to an inch cubed. And that size is important because if you have it too thick, remember the heat has to penetrate deep into this and actually cook it for a certain amount of time. So if it's thicker, it changes things up. And if you use um, uh, a quart jars instead of these pint jars, the processing times are different, but uh, we'll get to that. Anyway, so pretend this meat is seasoned, however you like it, and then uh, it's just gonna basically sit here and we'll, in the next little clip, I'm actually gonna do a, a close up on here of what I've got for uh, the tools of the trade, and I'll just kind of run through them really quickly with you. And then uh, we'll go in and show you how we put the stuff in the canner and then I'll show you the canner in operation. So uh, stand by. All right guys, a little bit of a different angle here. So again, here's the book, get this, read it. And even if you don't get this one, you still need to go and, 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 and get another one where there's approved recipes, okay? So that's number one. Number two, well, Here's our jar, okay? A company called Ball makes it. Uh, another company called Care or Kerr, K E R, they make one. Here's the jar. This needs to be sanitized. You can run them through your dishwasher at high temperature. Um, make sure. Remember, we're trying to keep everything sanitary and clean before we, you know, start loading food. We're going to keep for like a year, year and a half in this thing. So, this is the lid. This is not the lid. This is the screw band. The lid, if you notice, has a wax, I think it's wax, it's a seal around it. It's a one-time use deal. Do not reuse these. And if you notice, it's got, okay, when we can it, the stuff in, the, in here gets hot, okay? Well, we'll put the food in and then we put this on, here's the lid, and then we screw this on. Now the screw band is basically there just to keep it during processing. We don't do it super tight. And then when this heats up and cooks or whatever, pressure will escape past there. When it cools down, it'll go, and you'll hear that, okay? And it'll stay sucked down. It's kind of like a Snapple, you know, like a, everyone's had a Snapple, right? You pop the thing, you know, it, it opens up. So when it's done, and for storage, okay, a lot of, a lot of people don't do this. They keep, you know, they store it with the lid on or with the band on. But theoretically... This is what it's going to look like, and it's all that you'd need because you're going to, you can pry on, you know, you can pry up on this one, and it should not move. If it moves, then the seal is bad. Put it in your fridge, eat it now. 
Um, you know, like any other food, you just cooked it, put it in the fridge. But okay, so you need new ones of these. They come in, you know, packs of 12 or even packs, you know, more of that. They sell wide mouth and regular. This is this is regular. They do have wide mouth jars too. So this is the one thing that you absolutely need a brand new one on. Okay. So screw band goes on there. We've got a little funnel that helps, you know, uh, put meat or whatever, you know, liquid. We're not doing liquid, but whatever happens to go in there. Before we put these, these on, we actually have them sitting in hot water just to kind of soften up that seal a little bit. Not boiling, you know, um, it can be boiling, but whatever. And then here's a little magnet we take it out of, out of here with, okay? Just so you don't have to stick your hand in, you know, hot water. So that's for that. That goes on. And then, um, like I said, we've got our, our pressure deals here. Now we're going to cook, this recipe calls for cooking this for, for processing it for 75 minutes at 10 pounds of pressure. So, and then here is what we're called our jar lifter. And our jar lifter, well, it lifts jars. Just like that. You take it. You dunk it in, and then when you're done, you lift it out so you don't scald your hand. So that's basically it. Um, you know, very, uh, uh, very little. So next clip here, I'm going to show you how we pack this and how full we pack it, and then I'll show it. I'll show us uh, putting it into the water, and uh, you can get an idea of how, how how tight we do the band and, and and how full we have to do all the stuff. So stick with us. Okay. So, pretend we're doing this with all the jars, but I'm going to show you with one jar. You don't have to have this. This is really good for if you have anything with liquid, you know, if it's, if you're, if you're canning, you know, thing calls for, you know, a liquid solution or vinegar or anything like that. But, you know, we're just basically taking our, our, our cubes of meat, again, um, nothing precise, three quarter inch, one inch, um, you know. Nothing crazy, you know, it can be a little bit bigger, a little smaller, but don't, don't make them, don't make it too fine. And we just dump it in there. Okay. Now the idea is to pack in as much as we can. And I guess, like I said, this is called a raw pack or a dry pack, meaning we're not going to add any water to it. Um, we are going to rely on whatever moisture is in the meat, uh, to, and you'll see that it'll, there'll be plenty that comes out in this thing. So, you know, let me set this aside. So with, with the meat and all that stuff, you know, shove it in there, try to get, you know, air pockets out. You can't really get them all out. But again, don't worry about smushing it because we're basically going to turn this, like I said, into pot roast. So we do it to the bottom of the, the bottom of the, uh, of the um, threads on here. Okay. So we've got that going, squished in. Now, very important. Again, cleanliness, always keep cleaning your hands. What's really important is you gotta make sure that the jar has no nicks, cuts, or dings, or anything like that, because that's gonna obviously uh, cause the seal to, to fail. And we wipe it, I just use a, a wet paper towel, and we and we wipe that. And then you would do that with, with, all, of your, uh, with all of your jars. Now, I'm gonna go, and I've got water going in there, hot water, um, and I'll show you the lid. Okay, here it is. It softened up the um, the wax on the outside. And then what we do is watch this. I know you can't really get a feel for our torque on this, but that's that's snug, that's bottomed out, and then that's it. Okay, don't cr super crank on it. Don't leave it kind of loose. There's enough in there that it's gonna, um, uh, you know, there, there there's enough. Uh, the pressure is going to build up enough in there that it's going to let some, some heat escape and some air escape. And that's what we want because we want some of the air in here to escape. Okay. Cause there's air in there. Now when it heats up, it's going to escape. And then when it cools down, this will seal and suck this down and, and provide an airtight seal. Okay. So I'm gonna, yeah, I'll bring you along. Hold on. Let's do this. This is easy enough. So we grab our jar lifter, like so, and here's the canner, okay? 
and you just set that sucker right in there. You notice that the water is boiling in there, and I hope I don't drop my phone in there, and it's, um, it's not, I mean, the water's only coming up an inch or so, okay? So then we take our, take our lid, and it only locks in position one way, and watch this. Now it's locked, okay? You got steam coming out of here. Sorry, sorry, this, this is locking in here. You're gonna have steam coming up in here, okay? So, when we add our weights to that, um, the weights are gonna start jiggling on top of that little, little spout. And I'm gonna show you that when it starts going. All right, here's where the steam is escaping right now. Right now, it's 212 degrees in here. That's the first five pounds of, of pressure that it's gonna build. The second ring. Extra weight, that's gonna build 10 pounds of pressure in here. Now, when this thing starts doing kind of like this, okay, that means pressure's built up enough in there that air just kind of barely escapes. And then you, you, know, you can turn down, you can turn down your stove. And then when it starts doing that, when it starts jiggling, that's when your processing time starts. It doesn't start now just because we, we did the lid. Okay, that 75 minutes that we're gonna do this for doesn't start until this thing starts doing one of these. Okay, and that's gonna take a little bit and I'll show you when it actually starts doing that. And then that's when your counter, that's when your timer starts, uh, 75 minutes and then, um, uh, once your 75 minutes is up, you turn the heat off and it takes about another 15 or 20 minutes before the pressure comes down. And this thing, okay, means that it's safe to open. Because if you were to try and open this now, you'd blow this lid right through the root through the roof. It'd be like a little bomb. Don't do that. So it takes another like extra 15, 20 minutes or whatever for this thing to even like calm down from its, uh, uh, you know, thing. So um, I'll show you when this thing starts jiggling and uh, you'll see, you'll see what I'm talking about. See that? It's dancing. So we'll turn the heat down um, until it's just, you know, maintains that kind of little bit of little bit of jiggle. But that's that's that steam escaping from the inside. It's just uh, having a harder time doing it because it's got that extra weight sitting on top of there. That's what builds pressure inside of here that raises the temperature. So, all right. So it's. 918 um so we're gonna go 75 minutes from now and uh like i said it takes another extra several minutes maybe 15 20 minutes or whatever to to cool down now um that canner um and everything else you see you know the uh, the lids, the jars, the you know the accessories, the canner, all all that kind of stuff. Again, it's in the links. I'll put it in the links um, uh, through Amazon. I'd appreciate it if you go and buy through there if you're interested in kind of doing this kind of stuff. So and leave your comments below too. Now the next video or the next segment you're going to see, you guys are going to go back in time about three weeks when I originally shot the first one, and there'll be like six more cans and that thing coming out. But um, I think actually this part of the video came out better than the first time I did it, so I'm glad I did it that way. So um, see you three weeks from now, and uh, like, share, and subscribe. Thanks. All right, welcome back, you guys. It is now, you looked almost 11 o'clock. This actually went on till 10.26 uh, is when the 75 minutes were up. But this didn't stop going down and jiggling the pressure didn't go down for like another almost 15 or 20 minutes so it was it was you know you don't want to open this up before the, the pressure is off okay because this could fly off i mean you got a lot of pressure in there i mean it's kind of like a bomb don't do it okay you're gonna hurt yourself really really bad so wait till it goes down again that's not part of the processing time so we just rotate the lid just a little bit take it off and set it back aside and now very carefully we lift this and we set it on a towel, just like that. Now, if you want to look at it real close, okay, that is cooked venison. It's still bubbling in there, okay? We set it on a towel so that we don't actually put it on a cold surface 
so that it doesn't crack the jars. Like you wouldn't want to take this out and put it on, for example, granite. Okay, you would shatter the the jar and probably not be too good for your granite. The, the, the shock cooling. So you put it on a towel and you just let it do its thing. Now you let it cool and you basically wait for the pings. You know the ting, the ping, whatever. The when when the the lid sucks down. Okay, remember earlier on in the I think I spilled some. Earlier on in the video, we were talking about how. Uh, okay, cut that part out. <clears throat> earlier on in the video, we were talking about how the lids have that that little like um, uh, springiness to them. Well, these, you don't, don't touch the lids on these. They are going to cool down on their own. They're going to suck down on their own. And you'll hear, you know, it could take a couple minutes. It could take 10, half hour or whatever. But you hear like a tink, tink, you know, every, every now and then. And then basically that is this lid sucking down, meaning it's sealed. Let it cool on its own. Leave it out overnight. These things are done. If for some reason you come back and the lids, um, I, I accidentally touched this one, so I have to be careful with this one. Um, if you come back, and one of these, you know, one or more, whatever, any of these lids are not actually sucked down. They're still kind of springy, okay? That means it didn't seal, not the end of the world. It just means you're not gonna be able to, you know, like eat it a year from now because you, you know, you put it away downstairs in your, in your uh, pantry or, or uh, you know, fallout shelter, whatever. Uh, put it in your fridge, put it in your fridge, have it for dinner tonight, tomorrow night, the next night, whatever. It's perfectly fine, it's cooked. It's just, you're not gonna be able to keep it, you know, unrefrigerated on the shelf somewhere for a long, long time, so. Um, anyway, that kind of wraps it up. I highly recommend you get this and you learn how to can in general. It's, it's, a, really good, it, it's, it's a really good practice to learn. Um, and check out some other YouTube videos. And later on, we're gonna actually do, uh, you know, a recipe with this one. It'll be something simple. I mean, basically take it out, pour it in, heat it up, Put it on something but uh it'll be you know poured over something or we can make a gravy for it i don't know I haven't figured that out yet this was just the canning part of it so um you know just want to make sure if you guys want to get into any of the stuff um, i am an affiliate uh with amazon so uh when you click through these links you know if you do happen to, to like these products or whatever and you do buy them then <clears throat> i do get a commission so if you are interested in this kind of stuff i'd appreciate you clicking through uh through my channel um, instead of going through, you know, somewhere else. So it doesn't cost you any more money, but uh, I do want to disclose that. So, uh, you know, all, all the stuff is available uh, in, in many places. Amazon is, is a great place to do it. The jars, the lids, the, the canning book, the actual canner itself. Wait till that cools down, by the way. You can just leave it out and dump it out. Um, here's a little tip. If you have hard water, by the way, um, I'm not going to touch it in there. If you have hard water, it, it kind of gets... Uh, hard water stain inside. It kind of looks occluded. It doesn't matter. It's not going to affect the way <clears throat> um, the canning process works. But if you don't like the look of it, every now and then you can add like a few drops of vinegar or several drops, you know, or you know, a little bit of vinegar, mix it in with the water. And then, you know, when it gets hot, it'll actually clean the inside of that thing and it won't be, you know, it won't have that white uh, 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 residue inside. But that's not a big deal. Anyway, so thank you for watching. I appreciate it. This was kind of a longer video, but I wanted to make sure that you guys understood the process and uh, kind of followed some safety guidelines and actually wanted you to see this thing in operation while it's in operation. So you kind of have an idea if you get, if you get into this that, oh yeah, that's what it's supposed to look like. So I uh, appreciate it. Follow um, follow me, like this, like this uh, video, and subscribe and share with your friends. Um, we're going to have more cooking stuff. We're going to have more archery stuff. We're going to have more you know, hunting stuff. It's just going to be uh, kind, of a, kind of a mix. So thanks for tuning in, and I uh, appreciate it. Thanks.